roll, roll after midnight. Oh, it's so hot. It's so hot in Chicago right now. I think it's like 90 degrees outside. Is that right? I think it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit in Chicago right now. So bear with us. It is scorching hot outside. The snow is not melting. It's that hot. Anyway, thank you again for, for joining us in another episode of Ram Roro After Midnight. And then I have to put my, and there it is. Okay, good, good. I'm looking at the right side. And there it is again. <laughs> oh, there am I. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for joining us for another episode of Ram Roro After Midnight. And it is a nightly live stream via Facebook, which can be found on Facebook under Roro the Tenor or subscribe to YouTube and look for Filipino Tenor. And it is every day except Sunday at 12 uh, at 10.01 p.m. Pacific, 12.01 a.m. Central and 101 a.m. Eastern. That's why it's after midnight. And you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at um, Roro the Tenor. And Venmo doesn't hurt. I'm still waiting for that. You know what? People are still not sending me 50 cents on, on Venmo. I just don't get it. Not even 10 cents. It's, it's a joke, but I'm thinking, oh, maybe so. No. Still, people have not sent me 50 cents. Don't send me anything over. I mean, you could, but 50 cents, that's the whole point about it. So anyway, now for our joke of the day, by the way, um, just to remind everyone that joke of the day generously donated by my husband, Stephen. You can follow him on Instagram at Stevarino Hunter. Now our joke of the day is... What kind of dog can you get at the bakery? A purebred! Hey, where's my thing? Yay! Hey, wait, wait, wait. Oh, grrr, yes! Thank you, honey, for that. He will be... See, we got this for Christmas. So, uh, Darlene, thank you, Darlene, for um, giving us this. And look at that. That's actually Stephen's handwriting. He actually embossed it there. So next one is a new segment called Roro's Hair of the Day. Ooh, we're going to go blast from the past. What is Roro's Hair of the Day? And the Hair of the Day is this one. Oh, let me explain to you this one. First of all, this hair is... March 29, 2013, Pride Weekend in Chicago. This is the very first time I had blonde hair. Very first time. And my hair was already big, but this is the first time I actually experimented with blonde hair, bleach blonde. So there it is. So we're going to take it off so it's about me again. And there it is. So before I continue... I'd like to remind everyone to please wear a mask, social distance, and wash your hands every time you leave your place. You don't have to wear a mask um, while inside your house unless you're living with someone and they just used the restroom for number two. Then you have to wear your mask and gloves too, okay? You don't want to touch any like cooties, you know, if your roommates. Ugh. Anyway, so now <laughs> for our... Just make sure, see that? That's me. So now for our special guest today, very good friend of mine. I have performed with her a few times. Um, we've done a show together. We've done many gigs together, thanks to David Booth. See, David, I need, oh yeah. Can you hear me? Nod, Marisa, if you can hear me. Yes, <gasps> David? We want our check. We mentioned your name. <laughs> anyway, so my special guest right now is, so that you can see, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Is the fabulous, the fabulous Marisa Buchheit. We'll see how she really pronounces it. Is it Marisa or Marissa? I think it's Marissa Buchheit, soprano. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Miss Marisa Buchheit. Yes! Hello. Oh, my God. That intro was so entertaining. I feel like this show is only going to go downhill from here. <laughs> no. So after the show, I'm going downhill somewhere. Honey, get ready. <laughs> and I checked the weather, by the way. 
it's 32 degrees freezing rain. <laughs> so I was like off by a little. <laughs> Just a little bit. A so little. Anyway, say hi to our viewers. Oh my God, we got six viewers. That's like more than half of my usual. I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone. Good evening. It's way past my bedtime, but um, I'm so glad we can be here for your entertainment. <laughs> yeah, so you can follow Marisa the whole time. Um, Marisa's information will be below. You can follow Marisa on Instagram at Marisa Buchheit. Is it Buchheit, right? Yes, Buchheit. you say it perfectly Buchheit. in German, but here in America, we say Buchheit. Buchheit. Um, in France, we say Boucher. And my bus driver in grade school called me Mario Bucket. So it's Mario really Buck just mm, yes. Mario sure. bucket. Famous picture so. from the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. <laughs> so you know it's <laughs> so so Marisa, is it Marisa or Marisa? No, I Marisa. Marisa Mar is Marisa. in Italy. Yes, Marisa. Like, no, it's Marisa, so it's not Marisa, nor is it Marissa. It's Marisa because it's Marissa a, have two S's. Just yes. to let the people know. So um, tell us about yourself now that you are here joining me. Tell us about yourself, you know, where you're born, your family, where you went to school, everything about you. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Um, first of all, I should mention that I live in Chicago about a block away from my dear friend here, Rodell. So um, I feel like we, we could have, you know, just done this in person, but instead I'll throw a stone at you. Um, <laughs> but I am from Chicago, born and raised here. Um, however, my mother is from Bangkok, Thailand, and my dad is of German heritage. So uh, this has given me a bit of an interesting vantage point um, growing up and being multicultural. My mom's parents actually grew up in China um, and escaped during the communist China era. So um, yeah, so um, basically, my mom's a really amazing cook, and it didn't really, um, you know, end up falling down <laughs> the heritage to, to me, but I'm learning as I go. Um, and so where I went to school, let's see, I went to Chicago Public Schools, um, Northside Prep for high school. Um, I went to Merritt School of Music, which is a wonderful um, school in Chicago. And then I ended up going to Cleveland Institute of Music for my undergrad and DePaul for my master's. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, just to just to uh, Kim says hi, hi y'all. We're gonna see Kim in one of these pictures later because you know she is she is somehow related to uh, parts of our program today. So Kim, if you're still awake, <laughs> you'll see it. So now, um, so tell us about when you were in a. You are uh, uh, an interpreter of of opera, musical theater, and pop. And these are some of the roles you've done. You've done the title role of In Flower of Hawaii with moi, yours truly, The Queen of the Night, and Serlina and Susanna. Are, is there a specific, um, I know the answer to this, at least partially. Um, what So far, what have has been your most, um, uh, what is that? Not favorite role, most uh, uh, satisfying role that you've done, that you you think you have grown both as a singer, as a performer, and and as an artist within, you know, with other colleagues. So are you, you're expecting me to say Flower of Hawaii, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I think I have, can I have a two part answer? Yes, of course. Okay, all right. So Flower of Hawaii, since it was one of the more recent shows that um, I, I've been in, and also, of course, I was graced with the presence of my colleague and co-star, Rodel Roselle. Um, you know, and, and truly, I did learn a lot from performing with Roselle because, uh, did I just call you Roselle? I with Rodel. Roselle every time. <laughs> Ro, Ro. Uh -huh. um, because my friend Ro, Ro has performed on stages everywhere, Covent Garden, the Metropolitan Opera, Lyric Opera. So, you know, being able to be on this smaller stage, um, you know, with a great company here, Folks Operetta. Um, I was able to work very closely with him. As you can see, we're holding each other here. Um, and, you know, he would sing and whisper sweet nothings into my ear, which was really great. Um, but yes, you know, I, I worked with Rodell and then a bunch of other wonderfully talented Chicago actors, singers, dancers, hula dancers. Um, so it was very culturally enriching to do this show. It made me really want to go to Hawaii. 
Um, but it was just really cool because it was this German operetta um, that we're doing in America and it's all about Hawaii. So mm -hmm. um, that was a really cool experience. And then the other role that I would say was very rewarding for me was singing the role of Susanna in Le Nozze di Figaro um, because Mozart is just my fave. Um, I performed this role at an Italian opera festival um, one summer and, you know, being able to work on the language over there with like yes. <laughs> the authentic Italians. I mean, I, I know you can relate, Rodel. Um, yeah. It's just, it, it, there was just nothing like that. So um, that experience was also very enriching I for me. I just want to let people, let, just want to let everyone know that, you know, the best thing to, the best way to learn, um, um, the language that you're singing in is to actually be surrounded by and in a place where that language is spoken on a, on a daily basis, because uh, it, uh, that's one of the things I was told. And it is true because it's, the, it's so hard to learn really the, the, uh, you know, the subconscious it's easy to, it's easier to acquire subconscious learning when you're in a place like, you know, you went, you know, you're in Italian festival, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a lot easier. And then we suggest that like any, any aspiring singers, if you really want to delve into it, be, be surrounded by that. And now, so, so what, what's the next one that I have? So um, that was the opera that you not that uh, we mentioned uh, because she sings, you know, she, she's an amazing opera singer, of course. Of, it's like, I only sing with the best. Oh, gosh, shoot. <laughs> now we're talking about musical theater, and you've delved into that. The, the two two roles I have here is Julie and Carousel and Mary. Mary Sunshine Chicago. My question now is, Mary Sunshine in Chicago is usually done by a guy. <laughs> Now, yeah. how, did, how did this now I want to know because it's one of those people people will ask well it's okay so how was that experience how how did you come into the role and how was it performing this do you mean playing a, a guy that's actually a girl that's trying to be a I don't know exactly. you know it, it got confusing exactly. but as you know I feel like in a lot of operas the pants rolls and like there is some interesting gender kind of identity stuff going on. Um, but no, I think I, I did this role actually in Cleveland with a company called the Footlighters. And uh -huh. to be honest, I think they just needed someone who sang operatically. Um, they knew that at that time uh -huh. I went to Cleveland Institute of Music and they ended up, you know, I ended up auditioning and I was the right fit for that role vocally, they felt. So how did, so. How did they make, how did they, uh, what, was it with full, like full costumes and everything? Uh, for, mm -hmm. for Chicago. Now, how did they portray your character? You know, did they make you, did they make you look like a man dressed up looking like a woman or did they just make you look like yourself with makeup? Um, they made me look like an old lady basically. So it was uh, less of like the comical effect of the man being Mary uh, Sunshine. And it was more of just like kind of a, you know, kooky old lady kind of thing. Uh, so. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't me being like an ingenue soprano or anything like that. It was just yeah, it was just um so what a little about, bit of a different effect. Mm -hmm. What about Julie and Carousel? Tell us about that. When you Yeah, did well, um that is a role that I did here in Chicago and um it was one of my earliest musical theater roles. My first role ever was Liesel in the Sound of Music and that was like what made me want to go into stage performing and um, music period. Because before that, I knew pretty much nothing about the theatrical world, musical theater and opera. Um, so when I sang Julie, um, I, I have a recollection of the the one scene where all the, the young gales are gathered around me when I'm doing the, um, what's the use of wondering? If yes. da, 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 da. And it's like such a, a touching scene. And I felt like I was like this mother goose with all of these these young girls and like I was making an impact and like making some kind of an, an influence and um, perhaps a positive influence in, um, in someone's life, even though it was on the stage, you know, and make believe. But um, I just, I have very fond memories. And of course it's some of the most music, beautiful music ever written. So uh, that was a very special one for me. So now we're gonna talk about, we're gonna skip a little here because I realized, oh, before I be able to show the video, you're also a teacher of voice, piano and guitar. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, what genre do you teach of voice, piano and guitar? So at least uh, our viewers are know 
like, you know, oh, you, she teaches voice and piano and guitar. So at least, you know, everyone's more aware. I think the question is what genre don't I teach <laughs> for these? Because I get some beginners and some people like, I have a couple of guitar students that are young girls and it's more of steering them in the right direction at this point. But as far as my vocal students, um, it's quite a range. We do musical theater rep, some classical rep. Um, and then some of my singers just wanna do like poppy stuff. Um, but I have like an amazing 12 year old operatic male voice um, in my studio right now. And it's kind of like, what do you do with that? You can't give them too much like intense dramatic opera at this age. You have to give them a little bit of like the, the popera and the crossover stuff and like, you know, Oklahoma, oh, what a beautiful morning and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I mean, quite a range, I would say. So did you teach, did you, before the pandemic, because we know for a fact that you teach uh, virtually, you know, with mm -hmm. students, you know, just want to let, you know, oh, wait, wait, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to um, change here. So just want to let people know that uh, Marisa, 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 yeah, Marisa, Marisa. Marisa. <laughs> you can, you can say Mari. I wish I Marisa. had an easy nickname like you. Okay. Marisa, yeah. Marisa, I, I call you Marisa. You know why? Because that's how Filipinos would call it. Marisa, that's um, how we would say it. That's why I was like, wait, what? And then, so anyway, so um, um, you teach virtually, you know, uh, uh, I've seen you uh, at least uh, a picture of you teaching someone uh, guitar. And then I know for a fact that people could teach uh, virtually uh, through uh, piano and voice. Did you teach in person prior to, to uh, how was, how was the, how was the frequency uh, of, of, you know, responses from before the pandemic or and during the pandemic because i would some people would say oh well there's less students now but i'm thinking well if there's they can stay home and they could do that there may be more students so tell us about the frequency of the students at least the the, the lessons they have before and during the pandemic well to be honest i really only started teaching this year Oh, okay. Um, so in February, I started teaching at Access Contemporary Music, which is um, a school here in Chicagoland area. And I had only a handful of students yeah. um, in person. And then, you know, March-ish kind of hit the fan. And um, I thought, you know, that job was over and I just wouldn't be teaching anymore. And lo and behold, um, we ended up going virtual. So some of my students from that school stayed on and then I just started advertising, um, you know, what else are we gonna do? We're sitting at home um, during the, the lockdown and everything. So I started advertising, doing some like Facebook, Instagram ads and stuff um, and ended up building my studio up virtually this year, um, which has been really cool because I have students out in the Bay Area. I have a, a little girl in Pennsylvania. I have um, students in New Jersey and New York. Um, and of course, a lot in this area in Chicago too. Um, but it just kind of opened up this window of opportunities and made me realize, okay, well, maybe we can do more um, virtual teaching. So um, I ended up opening the Virtual Virtuoso, which is an online boutique music school. Um, right now we have 10 teachers and you know we're accepting students, uh, but it, it's interesting because I don't have a brick and mortar school. So I've found that the advertising for that has been a little bit trickier than advertising for, you know, people who, who might know you personally as an artist, uh -huh. like Rodell, I know that you do some teaching and coaching as well. Um, I've taken lessons with you. You're an amazing teacher. Um, well, I didn't and, say that again. I, I didn't hear you. It was breaking up. What would you say? Oh, I, I said that I have taken <laughs> voice lessons with Rodell before and he's a fabulous teacher and coach and I highly Thank recommend you. him to everyone. Um, Thank you. That was an awkward moment. Oh, <laughs> anyway, so so now now I'm gonna show you guys a uh, uh, um, a, a compilation of of Marisa's singing. Actually, this is a, a couple of classical ones. Actually, there is one in uh, Chinese. Is that right? Oh boy! Yep. Mm -hmm. I love that one. I love Thank it. Thank you. Xie xie. Famous <laughs> famous soul song. Um, and, and then the third song, the first, the first two are in classical, 
you know, style. But the third one is actually in the pop style with, and we'll, we'll, we will talk about the, the third song after I've shown you this. So this is Marisa again. And I hope you enjoy, of course you're, of course they're gonna enjoy it. Therese, all yours. Actually, that is available on iTunes, right? Mm -hmm. oh, cool. it is. How can they? How can get they get get a hold of this album? Um, just search Mari Therese. Uh, Therese is my middle name, and all yours on iTunes. I, it's probably on Spotify and all that. I don't know. I recorded this like right fresh out of college. Um, it, it's a little demo album of six original songs including that one that we just made the music video for this year. So, uh, so yeah. that was just this year, that, that music video. That is awesome. That was in oh August. My... Yeah. Wow. That's one of my best wow. friends that was in the video with me. Um, yes. That's awesome. That's all. Oh, oh, wait, wait. And there I am again. <laughs> I have to put <laughs> you back here and then, then do this. Yes. So now we go to, we, we've seen her perform. Now we're going to talk about now a little bit about, her Miss Illinois, Miss America experience in 2014, as um, as I guess as as um, I've I've uh, notified people, you know, when I posted about this show that you are, uh, oh maybe not, hmm, did I not? No, yes, Miss Illinois. I put Miss Illinois America. How do you actually how do you actually uh, 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 describe it? Because with Miss USA, they always put Miss Illinois USA. Do you put Miss Illinois America or Miss Illinois for America? 
No, no, no. See, we're just Miss Illinois. Ah. Or just Miss Ohio or just Miss Kentucky or whatever it is. Oh, uh, all the other ones, all the other yeah. ones came later. So, you know, and it starts getting to like Miss World of Snowflake, America, USA, Kentucky, Michigan, yeah. or whatever, okay, then so we're okay. not. When, when there is no, basically, it's just that Miss Illinois or Miss, whatever state it is, it, it, it's understood that it is under the umbrella of, as I call it, of Miss America organization. That's my understanding. Some people will say Miss Illinois America, but since we are the OG. OG, just, uh, oh, remember yeah. that, okay? 1921. Miss, Miss America, 1921, mm -hmm. OG. Mm -hmm. We've got oh. talent. Actually, the 90 year anniversary of uh, Miss America is coming up. All right, Miss America, 1921 OG, move over, Miss USA. <laughs> That's right, get out of here. Move over, baby Yoda. <laughs> yes, that's a swipe left, though. No. That is a swipe left. Remember that. <laughs> okay, so tell us about your experience. Like, um, uh, we wanted to know, like, you know, I don't know if this is, is like, um, was this the first time you've competed? Or, and if not, how many times did you compete? So because if so that it's, it's for people who do want to do it, you know, at least gives them some kind of like, you know, encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. So was this the first time I competed when I won? Oh, heck no. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I started competing at the end of high school. Okay. Um, so basically, I was really shy growing up, insecure, um, goth at one point, whatever. But I like to sing. So my mom, being Asian and um, a stage mom slash tiger mom, um, told me, hey, you should do these pageants. Or really, she said, hey you're doing this pageant and sign me up and everything. Um, and I, I lost, you know, I, I was really bad at it starting out. I was really bad at the interview process, especially swimsuit was not my jam. Cause um, I just was not like into the whole fitness game yet. Um, but I persisted through it and I ended up competing at Miss Ohio a couple times in college. I was second runner up to Miss Ohio one year. Um, and then I came back to Illinois and I won the state title on my seventh try. Oh, okay. You know what? It's, it's, that's, that's how it is. I mean, you, you can't, don't expect to succeed in the very beginning. You won't know how, what, how, what hard work is until right. you do it over and over again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's another one. Oh my God. I love this picture. Thank oh you. my God. I have that same exact dress. I mean, you crown. Do? Did you steal it from me? <laughs> Oh my God, I love this picture. I mean, uh, is that the one I used for the, oh no, I that was not the picture. Yeah, you used this one. Oh yes, for Instagram. For the little ad, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's her, and then that's her again, just so you know, people know, I was like, oh my God, I did see you. I did watch that year, so. That was the year, wait, what month was that? Uh, September. September, September 14th. Oh my God, so you got, yeah, so you got married after Stephen and I got married, because we got married uh, uh, late August of 2014. Wait, you just said I got married. I competed at Miss America. No, I got bit... no. You got married. You got married. Oh, I got married. Uh, Stephen and I got married late two th uh, late August 2014, and then you can be interesting. Oh, I don't remember those pictures. Aww. Yes, yes, yes. And we're gonna see. By the way, um, not a little bit of a spoiler, um. Jo uh, it's going to be on January 6th, just a reminder, January's, let me see here, mark your calendars, January 6th, I think it's January 6th, yes, January mm -hmm. 6th, it is January 6th, right, I did say January 6th, mark your calendars, January 6th, Marisa will be back here with two other, hopefully two other, if not just one, but, oh, there's like, <gasps> we got an Easter Egg right there. Grogu. Grogu. Hi, Grogu. <laughs> Looking at me. See? Knows his I get grizzly? I mean, I have a cuter one over there. But... Oh my god. Now show now show the other Easter egg. Can I show can I show yes. it now? I can Let's I can show, show it. I have permission. Yes, okay. Where'd she go? I'm kidding. <laughs> this is like show and tell. Oh my god, I feel so bad because he's so Oh sleepy. my god, what he's is so his name? Grizzly. Grizzly, just like the bear. Mm -hmm. He's a sleepy bear right now, and he's mad at me for waking him up. 
Oh, Grizzly. So how old is Grizzly? Just about six months. <laughs> oh my God, he gets a tag or a little, oh, he gets a little label. How Wait, sweet. Oh, he wouldn't look at the camera. Well, he was. Well, he already had around, his. If you turn around, we'll see his face. Okay. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hi. Oh, no, he's <laughs> Yeah, I'm in a oh, he yawned. Yay. Hi, Grizzly. Hi. Now put him down now. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Serious interview here. Okay, Grizzly, I, go back to bed. Go back to that bed. Was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. So we're going back to so so basically uh what are the things that when you became Miss Illinois and you 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 represented our state to to Miss America, what are what are the responsibilities you 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 had to you have to I guess uh, you acquired from the you know I guess from be for being Miss Illinois and what are the perks what are the good things also that come out where it's like oh it's it was worth it doing all this in a way because I got these these as well so mm -hmm. well it's a little bit different from being the Burger King so I cannot you know relate to that honor. Um, even though I do love the impossible Whopper. Um, so <laughs> yes. the, the responsibilities basically, and what we were all striving for was the job of Miss Illinois slash Miss America, um, because it does end up being a full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, at least when I competed and in my state, some states are different. We actually had to take a year off of school and or work. Um, so wow. I had finished Yes, I had finished college already, so I wasn't taking any time off of um, education at that point. Um, but I was a teacher at, at that time at an all-girls high school. So I had to put that on hold and travel around the state doing different appearances for, um, you know, community events, galas, um, speaking at, at schools uh, on behalf of my platform of arts education and a few different causes. And awesome. basically, I had to yeah, I had to prep for Miss America. So it ended up being a very, you know, uh, time-consuming endeavor. Yeah. So um, actually, the, the the coolest thing is like the three the three. I it just so happened the three beauty queens I know are all opera singers, and they all sang. And then I'm actually going to ask you that on the next. It's like I'm not going to ask you that until the next show because that is like specific to each and every one. I want to compare notes. But one of the things that you were able to do is this: is this for for being um, Miss Illinois, right? You're able to represent yourself and then be able to to make appearances at at games, or is it as you as as the singer, or both? Well, that was the cool thing about it. I think being Miss Illinois plus a singer ended up leading to a bunch of different cool opportunities. And, um, you know, like you're talking about some of the national anthem performances for the Cubs, the Bulls, um, the Chicago Air and Water Show, like a bunch of a bunch of these cool events. Um, I think first, really, I, I got in contact with these organizations because of a pageant affiliation. Like for the Cubs, I threw the first pitch out at a game um, right before Miss America. And then I said, hey guys, I sing by the way. Um, and so I went back twice now, once in 2019 um, to sing the anthem. So that picture is from May, 2019. Um, yeah, and it obviously is a very thrilling and you know quite an honor of an experience. So um, that's the great thing about pageants to me. They don't necessarily get you somewhere unless you knock on those doors, but it does give you a platform and it does give you, um, you yes. know, more of like a recognition and more of a stage to try and make things happen. So you it know, definitely has that's one, of the, that's one of the things about, you know, and we talked about this Filipinos are so I should have, I should have converted that. Like, you know, Oh, I was going to do that for the next show. I just remember that okay. <laughs> Filipinos are so love pageants. I remember this. Okay. L let me tell you something. I remember this growing up. Of course, we were watching Miss USA. We watched both, but it was around uh, Miss USA. Any, anyway, regardless, in any pageant, they always show the scores, right? <laughs> During back in the day, they showed the scores. 
every single one of them. And until the very, very end, like, you know, what's televised, they show scores until the very, very end. And we just have to guess. I don't know if it, if it works with Miss America, but one of the things yeah. I remember, but just one of the things I remember about pageants was I would actually write down scores and then tally. That's one of the things we did as kids. We were kids. We were like, like freshmen in high school to like sophomore, but we really love pageants. So, and I am familiar with 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 uh, Miss America because we also like we talked about this. We have we have categories in Miss Philippines that competes with specific specific areas all over the world. Where okay. uh, you know who, who competes for? There's one who competes for Miss USA. There was who competes with Miss America. There's one who competes with Miss International because we we have to have it in one pageant. Unlike here, there's so many separate pageants to be able to represent. But there, there's only one pageant. For example, the, the how it works there is instead of having runners up, you know what I mean? Instead right. of having runners up, for example, there's six. We would say instead of sixth place and Miss Philippines International goes to, they are the runners up and they represent. Right different so everyone's a winner in a way so that's how it but but we've always been obsessed with 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 these kinds of events so and especially when i learned what miss america was about it's like oh my god it's even more than just a beauty pageant that's when i'm right. like oh, i loved it and the talent portion i love it that there's a talent portion <laughs> i was going to say i think that's why some of your friends i mean your your pageant gals are Miss America girls, right? Yeah. And I think it's All because girls. Yeah, yeah, so you know them from singing or um, that. That's, that's what I love about. Know, there's. Let's just say you know. No offense to you know to some parts, but there's always substance with Miss America. Substance, right? All the YouTube, uh, you know, viral videos come <laughs> from the from the USA uh, system. Yep. But and I have to say, actually, my year, um, the first runner up. Miss Virginia, who gave her answer to like solve, I think the crisis with the Middle East. Um, John Oliver ended up featuring her on last week tonight and saying that she gave a, a better answer than like any adult person in America could. So you know, I, I was proud of my class and always proud of the Miss America girls who who make us proud. And yes, and and hopefully you know, and then I I look forward to talking more about the experiences and the differences in experiences in different years, uh, with you and uh, Jackie and hopefully Amy because, you know, you all competed in different years and different you know parts you know, f three to four years apart. So we're gonna see the differences and the the development and the improvement and whatnot. So. January, remember guys, mark your calendars. All right, January 6th, she's going to be back. Now we're going to talk about founding Trebel. What was, what, what urged you or what was the spark or the trigger for founding Trebel? Well, I should say I'm one of the founding members of Trebel, uh -huh. Kim, who was on earlier tonight. If you're still there, hi, Kim. Um, Kim and I were actually out one night with Leela, uh, mm -hmm. former member of Trey Bell. And we were at a bar, like after some kind of a concert with um, another girlfriend of ours, this lady Gail. And she knew that we were all singers. She was just kind of like a, a, a fan admirer of ours. And she said, hey, you girls should all sing together. You all sing beautifully and you're all friends, which is shocking because you're all sopranos. Um, and we just kind of took that idea and ran with it. And a couple of months later, we were having our big debut concert at the Chicago Cultural Center. I think David Booth had a, a part I, in that. <laughs> and uh, we were in you know, these beautiful gowns by a designer friend of mine, Calvin Hayden. And um, yeah, it just ended up being this really cool thing because Sopranos don't always get along together and have these great friendships, but we, we did and we got to um, perform together and work on different like operatic repertoire together. Plus pop music. I brought out my guitar for a bunch of songs. Yes, yes. Um, and it's been really fun over these, what is it now, like six? Oh my gosh, six or so years um, to develop the group and have different performances and gigs around Illinois. And, um, you know, we're hoping, I, I think even 
Indiana, Michigan City. Um, we just did it actually this year. We did a virtual gig for Western Michigan University, um, which we were supposed to do in person, but of course the pandemic hit Maybe, and everything. You know what? You, um, may, you may be you may be back here more than just once. Because you know what, you're part of the, you know, we're going to have the uh, Miss America, re, you know, uh, 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 powwow. And then we're going to have, hopefully we're going to have the Trey Bell powwow. Hopefully we'll also get uh, Leela as well, you know, to at least get everyone. And so, um, but um, Kim has double hearts right there, you know. So, oh, thanks, Kim. Aww, now, thanks um, for staying up. <laughs> the current members, of course, the current uh, roster in the Trey Bell is you, Marisa, Kim Jones, and Kirsten Leslie. They are all sopranos. And now I'm gonna show you just a little, a little snippet of 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 like, you know, their uh, their their little their little thingy here. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Oh, there, there's one thing. It's like, oh my God, I'm like downloading as, as we speak. I'm so glad I'm like, oh, there is one thing I did want to show about Trey Bell. Mm -hmm. like a little snippet of, of a little something that they did. Uh, let's see here oh. before. We, you were going to say something? No, this oh, is just a, a oh, surprise. There it is. So now here's another. Wait, is that? No, no, no. Oh, I thought I did. Just a second. So um, while I'm working on that, um, how are you guys uh, uh, dealing with, you know, I, I guess you're, you're still performing together during the pandemic. And how are you guys doing that right now in terms of a, uh, uh, performing for an audience, uh, uh, protocol, uh, like precautions that you do? Right, you know, right. and, tell us about that. Well, of course, safety is most important to us right now, um, as it should be to everyone. So we have fortunately been able to gather at my church. Um, I didn't mention I'm music director at Concordia Lutheran Church, which is just right, um, you know, in the old Irving Park neighborhood. Yeah, no, that's not right. North Center. Anyways, um, but we've been <laughs> able to gather there because it's a large enough space where we can space ourselves out um, significantly. Um, even with our pianist and open windows and everything. So, you know, we've been able to rehearse and actually record several of our um, virtual concerts there, which mm -hmm. has been, you know, just a really great thing for us because um, we had some gigs lined up this year that fortunately did not get canceled. Um, and as a result of that, we ended up having a couple added on. We sang for the Gail Borden Library. Um, we sang for Niles Public Library. So, you know, we've been able to um, accumulate a couple more opportunities, which we were really grateful for. So hoping we can uh, get a couple more for 2021, but we'll see. By the way, you uh, you you guys could look up uh, Marisa, Marisa on YouTube channel for all of the, a lot of the clips, especially for her music. Uh, will this include also stuff for uh, Trey Bell, stuff to something like that? So at least where can they find res uh, resources for to look up uh, tr stuff for, for Trey Bell? Is there a site or some kind of maybe yeah. Instagram? Yes, we have a website, treybellmusic.com. Hey, let me, let me, so that I could put it. So it's www, right? Dot, yes. Treybell. Trey Bell. Dot com. Dot com. Yes. All right. Look, look them up. Is that right? Yes. And, our, mm -hmm. and our Instagram is just at three sopranos, like the number three and sopranos. And since you're, you know, so quick there with your little at titles. The, oh, at three, the number three sopranos? The number three sopranos. So it's this. It is. 
Oh my God, now we get to, now that I have it there, a little sampling. This is nothing classical, something, you know, a little, you know, mm, feel good kind of music from, this is from their, uh, from their concert, a little ditty they did in concert at Davenport, which uh, is in, on Milwaukee Avenue in, Lo is it, no, not Logan Square. What is it? I think Wicker. Wicker, Wicker Park. Park, in Wicker Park, yeah. at Davenport. So I hope you enjoy this. This is a very small clip. If you want the whole clip, because I don't want to put full clips or else, you know, you're not going to look it up. So this is for you guys. This is Trey Bell, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Trey Bell. And um, you want to say something? Yeah. I was going to say that audience applause makes you like me both really happy, but also really sad at the same time. I Don't know. You know all that, God. like just That's being cathartic. in a room with people. That is a very cathartic scene. Sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now I get to thank you. I'll put you again. Oh, I thank you. We have come to the time where we now say goodbye to Miss Marisa Buchheit, soprano. As again, her information is down there. Follow her on Instagram at Marisa Buchheit and also uh, www.marisabuchheit.com. You can also look for her on, on uh, YouTube. Let's see, we have like, oh, that fan. Oh, my fan, it's like that fan. Oh, the fan that you had shouting on the bar. Oh, I thought it was the fan. It means, oh, that fan. Yes, thank you, Kim. Oh, thank you so much. Now, um, we ask this to most, most guests that I have, unless, you know, there's way too many guests. But now I'd like to ask, um, I'd like to ask Marisa that this is called the wow moment. Before you leave us, this is, we, we want to give you, we want you to give us a wow moment, a words of wisdom moment. You can address it to whomever you want, whether it's um, fellow girls who plan to compete in pageants or singer songwriters or fellow singers during the pandemic. Um, any words of en encouragement? Wait, people are still like commenting and stuff. Oh, this was fabulous. See, see, you're fabulous. Marisa, so now I give you the floor before I let you go. And by the way, after you're done, go to the backstage and I'll say goodbye to you while I end the show, okay? So now, well, ladies and gentlemen, you. again, Miss Marisa Buchheit. Well, first of all, I have to say thank you, Rodell, for having me as a guest on RAM. It's quite an honor. And um, past my bedtime, and I guess I'll be back a couple of times, but that's okay because um, it's so fun to talk to my, my good friend. Um, so for my little words of wisdom tonight, um, I just wanted to share 
a little bit more, you you know, I, I shared my story already that I competed in pageants maybe seven times at the state level before I finally took home the, the title that was my dream for a really long time, which was Miss Illinois. And I was 24 when I won. At that time, that was the age limit. And um, I made that cut off by two weeks. So for me, that has been kind of a common theme in my life that having that amount of grit is so important. And even when you want to quit and give up and walk away from it, even when you have people in your ear telling you that something isn't right for you and that maybe you know you should just give up on that dream and go and chase another dream. Um, I have found from my life experience that you should say no to those people and to those voices in your head and just keep going for whatever it is that fires you and drives you because um, you will get there somehow, some way. And even if it's a little slight variation on your original dream, um, that's okay. It's what's meant for you. And that's the beautiful thing about it. So good evening, all. And thank, thank you, you. Marisa. Bye-bye. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Marisa Buchheim, my special guest. She will be back here maybe once or twi once more or twice more, okay? Because she's amazing and she's pretty. She makes my screen look good, okay? So, um... Before I say goodbye, I just want to remind everyone that this you are watching Ram Roro After Midnight. You can follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. And <clears throat> as I end this, I would like to end this, this <clears throat> show uh, uh, by reprising the song that, that was just sung in my own way. Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. I gotta love one thing till I die. Can't help loving this fan of my